Well, Mohammed al Kurd joins me now from Sheikh Jarrah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. You grew up uh, in, in the neighborhood. Your family home is slated for eviction. What is the scene right now? Well, I thank you so much for having me. To start, it's not really an eviction. It's forced ethnic dis displacement, to be accurate, because an eviction implies legal authority. While the Israeli occupation has no legitimate jurisdiction over the eastern parts of occupied Jerusalem under international law, it also implies the presence of a landlord. And certainly, these Israeli settlers have not built our homes. They're not our landlords. They don't own our land. And thirdly, eviction does not imply the hundreds and hundreds of heavily armed police and army and settlers colluding blowing up your doors, throwing your children from your windows, and using brute force to throw you out in the street and assaulting and arrest you should you resist. It doesn't imply the grenades. It doesn't imply the rubber-coated bullets. It's not an eviction. According to the UN and countless politicians and human rights organizations, it could amount to war crimes. Actually, the situation is pretty tense, I can, I can tell you, and we are very scared of losing our homes to Israeli settler organizations. Uh, these settlers and, uh, and courts would argue that the, their claims to the land predates you and your family. Have you been allowed to prove otherwise? No. Um, courts, the Israeli courts, the Israeli occupation courts take their documents without verification, without authentication or challenge, whereas our documents will not be looked at. Um, they will not be taken into con consideration. Besides, just, besides, just because something is technically legal does not mean it's ethical or moral or historically just or accurate or correct. We've seen many, many systems exploit the law and exploit the judiciary to uphold supremacist and racist um, lives. You've written very powerfully about being 11 and remembering this incident that I spoke about, uh, about these settlers coming to your home and, 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 and taking half of it. How does it feel to have grown up with what you've called the anxiety of dispossession? It feels familiar because this is what every Palestinian feels like under um, the crushing things of Israeli colonialism in Palestine. My grandmother was thrown out of her home in 1948 in Haifa, and she was thrown out again in 1967, and again in 2009 when Israeli settler organizations colluding with the Israeli state took over half of our home. And this is my second time being dispossessed from my family. Should they go ahead and do it to me? Um, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's scary, but it also has a name. It's settler colonialism, and it's apartheid, and it's the fact that these settler organizations are working together with the state to exploit the law to dispossess Palestinians. Uh, what would you like from the international community? There has been a response by many uh, to the situation your family is in right now. Uh, what, what would you like to hear, especially from the new Biden administration? Well, you know, I think the myths of self-defense and both sides are growing more and more penetrable. People are being able to see through these myths and call an occupation for what it is and call an aggressor for what it is. And this is what, what we're going under, what, what, we're, what we're facing in Sheikh Jarrah, in Jerusalem, in the Gaza Strip, in Lid, um, is colonial violence. And it's only allowed because both the state and the settlers know they have impunity. The settlers are emboldened by an apartheid state that allows them to open carry in Palestinian neighborhoods. And the state is, an embold is emboldened by an international community that refuses to call it out for what it is, that allows it to target, to intentionally target civilian neighborhoods in the Gaza Strip and massacre 24 Palestinians including nine children, without facing any consequences. I don't expect much of the Biden administration, knowing that Ned Price refused to even condemn the killing of nine Palestinian children, tells me all I need to know. Obviously, I would like the international community to hold Israel accountable under international law, but I also hope free people of the world do their part to push their governments. Do you support the protests, uh, the violent protests that have erupted in solidarity with you and, and, and other families in your position right now? Do you support um, the violent dispossession of me and my family? I'm just asking if you support the protests that are taking place in support of, of, of your family. I support, I support popular um, protests taking place against ethnic cleansing, yes.